Avian Radiographs by Ashley Gent. General Guidelines. Anesthetizing a healthy bird with inhal inhalation gas is typically less stressful for the patient than taking radiographs without the aid of anesthesia. Anesthesia is also recommended due to the necessity of accurate positioning and alignment in order to obtain diagnostic avian radiographs. Never tape over the chest because it will restrict or prevent the bird from breathing properly. The general technique used for avian radiographs is low exposure time to reduce the motion artifact, high milliampereage, and low KVP to create long-scale long contrast, and is typically chosen by the species as a whole and not individual measurements. If a species-specific chart is not available, a cat extremity or modified cat abdominal chart can be used. If a measurement is needed, it should be at the thickest part of the body. As with all radiographs, proper safety measures should be followed. Wear a personal decimeter and lead-lined apron, gloves, and thyroid shield. When working with raptors, wear protective eyewear and long protective gloves. When working with water birds that have long beaks, a full face shield should be worn. The doors and windows should be closed. Whole body lateral view. Place the patient in right lateral recumbency. Pre-cut radiolucent tape to aid in proper positioning. Use a radiolucent sheet to tape the patient to it in case the patient needs to be moved for additional exposures. Carefully extend the neck, wings, and pelvic limbs and tape them in the appropriate position. The neck should be gently taped at the base of the skull and then the body moved gently caudally to reduce the curvature of the neck. The wings should be extended dorsally with the upper wings superimposed without using excessive pressure to prevent rotation. The pelvic limbs are extended caudally and superimposed, then taped or held with gauze at the distal tarsometatarsal bones. The landmarks that are used to determine correct symmetrical positioning for a whole body lateral view are having the sternum and the vertebral column on the same plane and having the kidneys, femoral heads, coracoids, ribs, and acetabula superimposed. The central ray should be positioned over the caudal tip of the keel and between the spine and keel. The lead marker should be placed on the cranial aspect of the film.
For the whole body ventral dorsal view, place the patient in dorsal recumbency. Pre-cut radiolucent tape to aid in proper positioning. Use a radiolucent sheet to tape the patient to in case the patient needs to be moved for additional exposures. Carefully extend the neck, wings, and pelvic limbs and tape them in the appropriate position. The head should be placed in a rostrocaudal position and gently taped at the mandibular articulation at the base of the skull. The wings should be extended at a 90 degree angle to the body and taped at the carpal region. The pelvic limbs are extended caudally and symmetrically, then taped at the tarsometatarsal bones. The landmarks that are used to determine correct symmetrical positioning for a whole body ventrodorsal view are having the sternum directly over the vertebral column and having the femurs, scapula, and acetabula parallel, equidistant, and symmetrical. The central ray should be positioned over the midline at the caudal tip of the sternum. The lead marker should be placed on the appropriate side.